this is the eighth version of this column, our last big preseason tradition, and I almost scrapped it. How can you predict anything in this league after the summer that just happened? Is any prediction too insane? The goal here is to sift through all the trend lines and intel to make some reasonable off the beaten path calls, and go out on some crazy, ultra specific limbs. I'd love if all of these turned out right. At least half will go bust. But where is the fun in playing it safe? Golden State wins 70 games. You know all the reasons this shouldn't happen. Malaise, exhaustion from their preseason China trip, Steve Kerr squeezing in several DNP rests for his stars, the Western Conference squintlet, the proverbial bullseye on the back. Dot, but this team is just so damned good. It went 67 to 15 and came within a Steph Curry mustache whisker of finishing first in both points scored and allowed per possession and it should somehow be better. It even enjoys continuity after working out the kinks with Kevin Durant. The Warriors are deeper now, deep enough to overcome Kerr sitting one star in almost any game, save for maybe a few road back-to-backs. Nick Young is a decent defender when he tries, and he can't even comprehend yet how easy his life is about to be on offense. Omri P, all sneaky cuts and Curry range bombs is built to play for this team. Three-time NBA finalists are typically primed for major age-related regression. Not this bunch. Kirk can issue all the take-it-easy edicts he likes, his players are too competitive to help themselves. It's hard to find any game in which they would reasonably be considered an underdog. Even sniffing 70 wins would give Golden State an airtight claim to the greatest four-year regular season run in basketball history. Cap it with a title and the Warriors elevate themselves into the loftiest historic debates. Houston finishes second in the West the last time I predicted big things for the Rockets, they farted to the number 8 seed. So let's run it back. The safe bet is the Spurs. They just win, and they are bringing back almost the same team once Tony Parker returns. The sexy bet is Oklahoma City. Before acquiring Carmelo Anthony, the Thunder's path to 60 wins was clear Paul George would slither around as the slightly less wealthy man's Kevin Durant, and their defense would smother people. They had an identity, a mix of new Thunder and old Thunder. The Anthony deal, one you make every time, confuses that identity. That is worth it in the long run. You need crazy scoring potency to hang with Golden State. You need to embrace variance and risk. But Melo introduces a learning curve that might deflate the win total. He softens their defense. Snagging George and Melo in two for one trades depleted Oklahoma City's depth. Houston will have its own superstar integration hiccups, but adding one new guy, even a slow a down yapper like Paul, should be smoother than adding two. Houston is deep across every position Clint Capella and Nene Hilario form a dynamite center rotation and the Rockets are loaded with rangy, corner-shooting wings. Ryan Anderson is roadkill in the wrong playoff matchup, but he's a dangerous regular season weapon. All these teams should be roaring in April. The bet here is Houston wins the most before then. La Marcus Aldridge opts in, and gets traded. What Aldridge does with his $22 million player option is one of the hottest questions in the league. I probably asked about 50 executives and agents and the response was close to evenly split. When Aldridge signed in San Antonio two summers ago, the option barely registered the cap would zoom up and up, teams would have oodles of room, and Aldridge would opt out to cash in on a new deal. A player of his age 32 and stature might opt out for the security of something like a three-year, $50 million deal. Waiting another year risks further age-related erosion. Side note he's also eligible for an extension before the season starts. Just saying. But who is giving Aldridge a new $17 million per year deal in a cap environment tighter than anyone anticipated two years ago? Most teams slated to have mega room are bad. Aldridge serves no purpose on a bad team. The Earl Watson connection will probably be there in Phoenix, but Suns GM Ryan McDonough should throw himself in front of any Aldridge signing. Aldridge might normally count on his incumbent team for that sort of offer. But if this season ends the way the last one did, both parties might be ready to move on. He could still choose that $22 million over a cool market, work with the Spurs on a trade, and try free agency again in the summer of 2019.
when teams are for now projected to have more cap room. Kawhi Leonard wins MVP. I picked LeBron James a year ago. I was tempted again, but voter fatigue has metastasized. This is a regular season award. It is absolutely fair to Doc LeBron for waiting until April to try on defense. Kawhi Leonard finish.